Happy Canada Day! Happy Canada Day, guys. What do you think of my Canada flag rabbit ears? I don't know what these are called. I call them rabbit ears. Ah, so happy Canada Day, guys. Uh, you know what? We should go outside. It's a nice day. We should go to a park. But while we're going to a park, I want to ask you a question. What's your favorite thing? Oh, just lost my rabbit ears. What's your favorite thing about Canada? Is it my rabbit ears? Is it Mad English TV? Yeah, that's your favorite thing. But uh, let me know down in the comments. Think about it while I drive to a park. And then uh, well, we'll enjoy the day outside. All right, guys. We've come to Surrey Bend Regional Park. Big, beautiful, and watery. A landscape continually shaped and reshaped by the Fraser River. Okay, so the Fraser River is... Uh, I don't know, maybe we can uh, go to the Fraser River here. I think I think I can show you guys the Fraser River, but uh, just take a look at these fish, okay? So it says here, thanks to the First Nations Fisheries Legacy Fund for providing these life-size white sturgeon sculptures. Okay, so a sturgeon is the name of a fish. Okay, look, this is life-size. Okay, so these are real, <laughs> can you imagine that? A fish that big. That's uh, that's crazy. So there's sturgeon. Okay, I mean, you can see my head. Like they're they're longer than me, I think. Yeah, they'd probably be at least like six feet long, maybe. And uh, I don't know how heavy they were, but uh, so imagine catching one of those on the end of your fishing line. Boy, that'd be quite quite an experience, eh? So yeah, we're at uh, Surrey Bend Regional Park. Some information here. Oh, extreme fire danger. Oh, good thing I don't smoke. Don't smoke. Ruins your lungs, right? You're a loud vehicle over there. Guy's showing off with his truck. All right, so do your part, stay two meters apart. <laughs> That's kind of a scary sign. Man. How far is two meters? The distance from a cougar's nose to the tip of its tail. Wow, okay, so this animal, an animal, um, well, in Canada, we have cougars in the in the woods. Hopefully there are no cougars here. Um, yeah, cougars are like uh, mountain lions. Okay, like kind of like a, a jaguar kind of animal. I think ja jaguars are like jungle animals, but, um, Thought I had someone sneaking up behind me there. Yeah, so jaguars are, I think they live in like the, the jungle. I don't know where do jaguars live. All those animals are a little bit related, but uh, here in Canada, we have the cougars. Okay, cougars are mountain lions, they're dangerous. They kind of stalk, they, they, they're they really quiet. You can't, you don't know where they are. I mean, you can't just see it coming like a bear. <laughs> bears are loud. They're, you can hear bears come crashing through the forest, right? But But cougars, stalk their prey hopefully you know cougars are stalking me right now the word cougar is also a slang term for uh, an older woman who is attracted to to young men okay so let's say like maybe a 50 year old 50 year old woman you know likes 20 year old guys or you know, 25 year old guys that would be kind of a it's a slang term you might hear if you hang out in certain circles <laughs> you probably don't hear that term every day you hear loud noises there's some train tracks over there so probably hear some trains I don't know where I'm going I should probably have a plan here I don't know if I should go this way or over here I think the river is somewhere over there so I've never been here before, so you're exploring it with me, our Canada Day adventure. Yeah, so we'll see if we run into any cougars. <laughs> so yeah, and I like that term, you know, I don't know, I don't know if it's a derogatory term. The word derogatory means uh, you know, kind of a kind of a bad word to describe 
you know, that kind of a wo woman who likes, I, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> what's wrong? What's wrong with, what's wrong with older women liking younger men? I don't know. But anyway, you might hear that term. Here at Mad English TV, I teach you English. Whether you like it or not, whether I like it or not, whether society likes it or not, we, uh, you know, it's good to be in the know. In the know means you understand something. Knowledge is power, right? Then you can decide for yourself if, uh, <laughs> what you think about it. My job as a teacher is just to teach you English and teach you the slang words and uh, everything like that. Look at that plane flying over. It wants to make an appearance in my video. Wow, look at that thing. It's crazy that they invented a way to fly, eh? People can fly over the earth. Technology these days, eh? So anyway, Canada, welcome to uh, Canada Day Walk here in Surrey Bend Regional Park. So yeah, what's your favorite thing about Canada? You know, I, uh, I think maybe my favorite thing is just the peace and quiet. You know, just, just look at this place, like, it's just so peaceful, so beautiful, you know, birds, trees. You know, just, just, just listen for a second, I'll just stop and just listen for a second. You know, you just hear like the wind rustling in the trees, rustling, that's the noise that wind makes in uh, the trees it blows the leaves that sound is called a rustling a rustling noise so yeah the wind rustling in the trees the uh you know the odd plane flying overhead birds in the trees look at that nice sun it's a beautiful day here what's this it's like some kind of a picnic spot keep two meters apart avoid gathering a nice green green thing and what is this some kind of a metal thing what purpose does that serve what purpose does that serve <laughs> that's a strange thing look at that it's like hollow in there and uh, there's like a, a place to put posters and stuff there <laughs> that's just such a strange green thing there what what, what what why does that have to be there <laughs> i don't know maybe that's modern art reminds me of uh calgary's big blue ring i've made a video about that in the past talking about calgary's big blue ring <laughs> this is just such a funny thing calgary spent like four hundred thousand, more than 400 i think it was closer to five hundred thousand dollars on this big blue ring that serves no purpose. <laughs> it was considered art. Modern art, I guess. Yeah, it looks like this is kind of like a camp campground area, like uh, some picnic tables here. I don't know if I don't know if people can actually go camping here, but I don't see why not. You could pitch your tent, you know, set up your tent here and just eat your food at the picnic table. I think the river is really close to here, guys. So yeah, let's go find the river. But let me know down in the comments what your favorite thing about Canada is. So I would say maybe my favorite thing is just the peace and quiet. You know, every time I come back from overseas, if I'm over in, you know, some some other part of the world that's more crowded. Like uh, I lived in China for over a year and uh, I remember, you know, I lived in the city of Shanghai. Shanghai alone has almost as many people as Canada, the country of Canada, right? And uh, I remember when I came back one time uh, in the airport, I landed in Vancouver airport, he just came off the plane and it just, it just struck me how quiet Canada is, just such a quiet place, just so peaceful, you know, after coming from a huge city like Shanghai. But anyway, here's the river guys, look at that. Ooh, there's like a little path here through the river man isn't that gorgeous let's go down here let's go through this someone has blazed a trail here and uh wow look at this beautiful spot hello <laughs> look at that beautiful river guys that's amazing yeah wow 
All right, let's go back up the trail. Well, I gave you guys a shot of the uh, the river that's called the Fraser River. It's kind of the big river here that, uh, well, kind of goes through BC. So yeah, well, have you thought about your favorite thing yet for Canada Day? And uh, so yeah, I would say that's one of the one of my favorite things about Canada. It's just the peace, the, just the the. I mean, peace in peace. Peace in different different ways. I guess uh, the word peace can have different meanings. Peace can mean the absence of war. I'm really thankful there are no wars in Canada. People are fighting each other. There's you know, different people groups living to relatively peacefully together. That's a nice thing. You know, most Canadians don't need to own guns to to, to defend themselves. I mean, my relatives own guns for hunting. You know, I don't, I don't own any guns. I don't need to, I don't feel the need to own a gun here. It's a safe country, relatively safe. Uh, it's quiet, peaceful can also mean like quiet, you know? So yeah, I uh, really, really, really value that about living here. It's uh, just a beautiful place to live in. Let's see some crows cawing. Sound crows make is uh, called a caw, crows caw. Oh, hey, look at this cool bridge. What is that? This cool wooden, wooden thing. What is that? It almost looks like a bench. Can you sit here? Oh, look at that. <laughs> you can sit here on the edge of the, <laughs> the edge of the, the bridge. I don't know if that's supposed to, is that art? I don't even know what art is, guys. Tell me, let me know, what is art? What constitutes as art? Look at that. Would you say that bridge is like art? I don't know. Ooh, there's some bikers coming here. Look at these nice flowers. Man, these are just beautiful little, uh, what color is that? Violet, maybe? Violet flowers, lavender. Yeah, just gorgeous. And then uh, we've got something up here. I don't know what this is. It's kind of a cool little park here. Look at these nice big logs. You can sit on these. Is this log hollow? Oh yeah, look at that, guys. I don't know how. I don't know if it goes all the way through, but uh, yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? Just walk along here. Some sort of a display. Here. Oh, here's a uh, here's a map. Okay, so we're here, and uh, Vancouver is here. I think. Let's see. What does it say? The workings of a big river. Why is the river water brown? The Fraser River is a conveyor belt of gravel, sand, and mud. Every year, its fast flowing water moves thousands of tons of eroded sand, mud, and gravel downstream from the mountains of interior BC. Yeah, I mean, interior, like, BC has a lot of mountains, right? Like uh, Alberta, I think Alberta is usually seen as the province in Canada with the mountains, but uh, man, BC has a ton of mountains and it uh, interior. So at Surrey Bend, the Fraser nears the ocean, slows down and drops much of its load here on the river's ever-changing shores. Okay, so that's why it's called Surrey Bend because I guess the river the river bends here. The ocean isn't far away, guys. Uh, the ocean is maybe, maybe like five kilometers away, 10, 10 kilometers away from here. So yeah, this is the ocean is just, the Pacific Ocean is just right over there. So that's kind of cool. You know, this area is one of the nicest areas in Canada. There's mountains, trees, lakes, rivers, and the ocean, all within just a very, very close proximity Proximity means like nearness, right? So uh, yeah, it's uh, this area is just beautiful. Another plane trying to ruin my video. But um, anyway, guys, I wanted to take a few minutes to uh, just address the, you know, just the really sad news that's been coming out of Canada in the past few weeks. You know, it's, uh, you've probably seen it on the news, it's been BBC News and Canadian news sources all around the world people have been seeing this news about uh, the unmarked graves like the, the remains of children in unmarked graves that have been found at uh, 
at residential school sites across Canada. I think the the number now is uh, I think it's over a thousand. It started off with you know they found uh, I think 215 unmarked graves in Kamloops, BC, which is, isn't far from here, a few hours drive from here. And then they found a lot more in Saskatchewan, and uh, now they found more here in BC. And I think the number is over a thousand now at different sites across Canada. And uh, it's just heartbreaking news, you know. The uh, yeah, so I just thought I would uh, take a few minutes to talk about that because a lot of my subscribers probably, I mean, a lot of them are newcomers to Canada. They might not know about much about Canadian history. And I'm not a Canadian history expert either, but. Um, yeah, the, the, the term residential school, you probably have heard that in the news maybe. Let's see, which way should I go, this way or that way? Maybe I'll go this way. Yeah, you've probably heard that, that, that term, but you might not know what it means. So I, I'll just explain that to you. So, the, uh, so residential schools were boarding schools for First Nations children. Okay, so uh, a, a boarding school is a school where the, the children live at the school. Man, those birds are loud. So yeah, boarding schools, uh, you know, the students live there, eat there, the, their life is there. They sleep there, you know, every, everything is there, away from their parents. Okay, so that's what a boarding school is. And uh, so these, these uh, schools, resident, they were called residential schools. So the idea was, well, I don't know who I don't know who came up with this terrible idea, but it, the idea was to like the word is like re-educate, almost like re, you know you hear sometimes on the news about countries having re-education camps, right? To like basically take a minority group and kind of try to integrate them into the majority groups values i guess or, or their their education system so i mean this is, problem isn't just in canada it's 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 in other parts of the world too it's a really really sad thing that uh, minority peoples get um kind of just kind of crushed basically i, I don't know what other other word to use so so yeah the, these children were taken from their families from their culture from their homes from everything forcibly and and, and they, they were forced to, to 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 live at these places called residential schools and uh, and they were just treated terribly you know they uh, they were abused all of them were abused every one of them were abused because they were taken from their family I mean if you get taken from your family and forced to forced to live somewhere else that's abuse I mean, but uh, that wasn't the only abuse. There were tons of other abuses that took place. Rape, uh, you know, beating, murder. I mean, they, they, they weren't even allowed to speak their own language. Can you imagine that? You know, there are a lot of indigenous languages in, in, in Canada. A lot of people don't know about... Sorry, guys, I'm being eaten alive by these little flies or whatever they are. They're trying to eat my legs. So yeah, I mean, a lot of people think the languages in Canada are English and French. Well, I mean, from a government perspective, those are the two official languages in Canada. But um, I mean, there are a lot of indigenous languages all of, all across Canada. And uh, so these, these children, look at this nice bridge, guys. It's just beautiful, quiet, peaceful area. Yeah, so... Uh, so these these children a lot of them were well they weren't allowed to even speak their own language to each other they had to speak English uh, and so that's uh, imagine that imagine not being able to speak your language like for me to think about I'm not allowed to speak English or <laughs> I speak uh, yeah that's just ridiculous imagine if you're from Brazil or you go to some other someone takes you from Brazil or takes you to a different place and you have to, you, you can't speak Portuguese. Or someone takes you from your home in Vietnam and you can't speak Vietnamese. It's just, uh, it's just a, it's a basic uh, 
human right to speak your own language, to be able to speak your language and not to be punished for, but these kids were punished for, for just even speaking their own language. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's just, it's just such a heartbreaking part of Canadian history, guys. I, uh, I was reading, I was reading on the, the news this past few days and uh, I read a one woman, one woman was saying how, guys, I'm just being eaten alive by these bugs, these flies. Maybe if I run a little bit, no, they'll leave me alone. So yeah, I remember uh, reading this, this woman's story and uh, she was, I didn't get rid of the bugs. Uh, so yeah, the, she was saying that uh, the first night when she and her sister were taken to this residential school, you know, they had, they had to sleep in bunk beds, right? However many bunk beds there were in a room. And uh, her, her younger sister was scared. And so she went to sleep. Uh, she went to, to her older sister's bed to sleep with her in her bed because she was scared. And uh, she got uh, punished for it. You know, she, I don't know, I think she got the strap or got like some kind of phys physical punishment because that wasn't allowed to sleep. You're not allowed to go sleep with your sister when you're scared. <laughs> you know, when I read stories like that, it's just, it just breaks my heart because, you know, I remember when I was a kid, you know, I was scared of stuff. Um, you know, I remember one night there was a storm and uh, I was really scared and I, I pushed my bed next to my brother's bed, my older brother's bed, because I was scared of the storm. And I felt safer, you know, safer being closer to my brother. So yeah, you know, to think about that little girl who, you know, was just scared and went to sleep with her, her sister, you know, and then to get punished for something like that. She probably didn't even know she wasn't allowed to do that, you know, and then to get, to get punished for that, like, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just brutal, brutal stories that you you hear about this residential school system. So the last school closed in 1996. So we're not talking about ancient history here. We're talking about um, very, very recent history. I mean, hey, I was, I was alive in you know, 1996. I was a kid. Uh, I didn't know anything about, I, I, I don't remember ever learning anything about the residential schools as a kid. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of Canadians are, are asking themselves the question, how can we celebrate Canada Day when, you know, with this news that's broken, like this news that's, that's been, been coming out about all these unmarked graves, all these children, uh, it's just, uh, and that's a good question. That's a very good question. It's a fair question. It's a valid question. How can we celebrate Canada Day with with this uh, sad news? You know, I think a lot of Canadians are really proud of their country. A lot of Canadians love their country. They want to celebrate their country. But they're wondering how governments, both past and present, have been so incompetent to First Nations people. I mean, if they're finding hundreds, if not thousands of unmarked graves, you can't tell me that the government didn't know what was going on. Unless they were completely incompetent. Maybe, I guess that's possible, but uh, I think a lot more likely is uh, the government just uh, turned a blind eye to it. You know, if you turn a blind eye to something, that's an idiom in English. To turn a blind eye means to uh, to choose not to see something. To, uh, I mean, you see it, but you turn a blind eye. You don't, uh, you just sweep it under the rug. That's another idiom. To sweep something under the rug means just to, uh, to try to hide an issue. You know, if, uh, if you're sweeping, for example, let's say uh, there's, you're cleaning your house, some guests are coming over and you sweep something. You, you don't want to get the dustpan 
and actually deal with uh, the mess, you just sort of sleep, sweep it under the rug. Have you ever done that or push some boxes under your bed or under the, just get rid of it in, in a way that doesn't really solve the real, the real issue, right? So I think the governments, I, 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 I don't really know, loud plane again. I don't really know, um, you know, like I said, guys, I'm not really, uh, I'm not uh, that knowledgeable about, about this whole thing, but, um, but it's just, it's just so heartbreaking that, uh, that how the government couldn't, wouldn't give justice to, to, to First Nations people. It's just so, it's just so angering, like a country's prosperity doesn't need to come at the expense of a group right canada's prosperity didn't need to come at the expense of first nations people but i think in a lot of ways it seems like it did or it happened and the government turned a blind eye to it. you know it's uh it feels so strange to talk about this because i think a lot of people like myself never really weren't taught the weren't weren't uh weren't informed about this really the, the the seriousness of guys look at these flies and look at these nice salmon berries oh man i'm just being attacked here but um yeah so like for example my my ancestors my relative my grandparents and their their parents they came to canada fleeing war in eastern europe so I can say very confidently that uh, that my ancestors, my grandparents, and my at least two or three generations back, uh, they they had they had nothing to do with the residential school system. They weren't uh, they were just very poor farmers. They lived in like half the barn, and the animals lived in half the barn, right? So my both sides of my parents, my mom and my dad's side of the family, they like lived in the barn. You know, for yeah, like my grandparents grew up in barns. They, they, uh, they guys, I can't even think. Look at these flies. Oh, there's a little baby bunny. Look at that little baby bunny. Look at that cute little thing. And here's another shot of the river. Gorgeous river. Look at those logs. I cut down these logs and then they float the logs down the river. I think the, the logging industry is, uh, quite uh quite a big industry here in this part of Canada but um yeah so uh so my my ancestors for example they came from eastern europe they were fleeing war and persecution and then when they came to canada they uh they just lived a very very simple life in like a barn they had uh, you know a bunch of kids you know it's very typical for families to have like six or seven kids and uh and then they would just like kind of like they had a brutal life you know just very hard very hard work and they didn't they didn't have time to eat. they didn't exploit anyone i'm very confident to say that my none of my ancestors in my immediate history exploited any people they didn't have any anything to do with the residential school system they weren't teachers in the in the in the system or anything so a question that i've kind of been asking the last few days is who were these people who who were they uh, and and also another question I've been kind of asking is did my ancestors did they know what was going on uh, I mean surely they were kind of would have been within range of of knowing like uh, these schools where are they they're all just across Canada normal places like this you know in trees and lakes and rivers they're just normal places so they're not like hidden schools often they're there they're here in canada and uh and so it's kind of it, it makes me wonder if my if my ancestors like my grandparents really knew what the what really knew what was going on uh i i don't i don't know i don't know the answer to that guys these flies are biting me ah oh. Man, these flies are just brutal. <laughs> I'm gonna have so many fly bites on my legs. But anyway, yeah, I, I, I don't really know to the extent to which my to which they knew, but I, I would just wonder if they were within range and they could have known maybe about the extent of these 
you know abuses like my my grandparents are such nice people like they uh like i said they wouldn't hurt anybody and uh if they had known if they would know that there were like children being like children's bodies being thrown into unmarked graves i would like to believe they would have done something about that these red berries but uh you know like i like i said i, I really don't know um so the question i've been asking myself the past few days is just wait till the plane flies over so you can hear my voice yeah like the question i've been kind of asking myself is 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 there injustice going on around me that is within range of me knowing um, that I could do something about that I'm kind of just not seeing? Am I blind to it? You know, the reason I use the kind of the phrase it within range is because, you know, it's uh, it's just kind of impossible for people to, to know about all the problems in the world, all the suffering in the world. Like, I'm sure there's... Uh, over other countries there's atrocities going on that I've never heard about that are you know <laughs> there's just so many different people groups in the world so many different yeah, countries there are only about 200 countries in the world but there are thousands and thousands of languages um, maybe 10,000 languages I'm not sure 7,000 10,000 languages somewhere around there different people groups different tribes and th there's a lot of conflict in the world and everything so it's impossible to know about everything but uh, but but just around me, what's happening? How can I, how can I help bring justice to to people around me? I mean, justice, justice uh, isn't justice unless everybody gets justice, right? If one group of people gets justice and another group of people doesn't get justice, well, I mean, that's the definition of corruption right there. That's injustice, not justice. So. Yeah, it's uh I just wonder I, I just wonder why how how is it possible that the Canadian governments have been so incompetent to deal with with this? Like it's it seems like the way the the best way would just be to stop and to just let say let's deal with this, you know? If I were the Prime Minister of, of Canada, I would just say, okay guys, this is a real problem. We're not going to just kind of let this information spill out and then react to it. Let's take a proactive, let's take a proactive approach and, uh, and just solve this, this issue. We're not going to do anything until we deal with this. You know, governments always try to make themselves look great, right? And say, oh, we're going to spend some money. We're going to send some money to this country over here. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Like, this is such a big problem in Canada that has been swept under the rug you know, we, we, we just need to stop every stop doing everything and just to, to just address it. It seems like it needs to be handled on like a, a government level and say, hey, we're, we're going to just focus on this, kind of find out the truth, bring reconciliation to the, to, 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 you know, First Nations people. Like Canada has so many different groups now. And uh, that's one of the in a way, one of the, the the nice things about Canada is there's so many different groups living together in peace, right? Um, so that's that's something to be celebrated, but at the same time, like I said, it can't come at the expense of a group. And it seems, in a lot of ways, like the prosperity of Canada has come at the expense of the First Nations people, and that's such a thing to be grieved. It's such a sad thing to read these stories about the residential schools and how they were treated, and oh man, like. So anyway, I, I, you know, I don't really have a, I don't really know how to, how to conclude this, uh, whatever, this, this topic, but, um, I just wanted to talk about it just as a way to kind of grieve, grieve this aspect of, of Canadian history, that this, this has really happened. And it was just so sad to hear this news that's coming out. I'm sure this isn't going to be the last of it. It's going to be, it's going to be more and more. And truth is always a good thing because truth allows people to see what really happened, right? You can't have justice without truth. And, uh, yeah, I mean, to all the first nations people in Canada, man, like I just, uh, I just, I just really hope justice can be do done. Like, obviously you can't, you can't, uh, bring justice to the past. The past is the past, but at least you can acknowledge the atrocities that have happened and and uh, kind of
kind of try to try to get justice moving forward is that too much to ask for like for me I, I mean everybody I know would want the justice to apply all across the board to any people group any religious group any ethnicity you know so when I hear these stories about in, you know indigenous mis murder I've talked about this idea before on my channel or not this idea this uh, I've talked about this atrocity and murder murdered and missing indigenous women in Canada like uh, it's just it's this isn't a past problem this is a this is an ongoing thing that uh, that indigenous peoples in Canada are are facing it's just just terrible injustice and yeah it just I would I would just want the I want the law to be applied equally to everybody I want like hey I mean shouldn't the government investigate shouldn't shouldn't the government have been proactive in investigating these residential schools a long time ago it almost seems like the government's approach has been okay if news comes out we're gonna kind of like eh, kind of try to manage it but we're not gonna really 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 take this seriously that's that's my impression of the government's uh, approach I don't think the current government is doing anything I don't think the previous government really did much about this issue so I don't know I, uh, I don't really know how to uh, I don't have any political influence but um, I would just like to, to to talk about this just to bring some light to this and maybe uh, you know or maybe some politician will and maybe maybe uh, some of my viewers will become politicians some hey if you're a newcomer to, to Canada if you'll be the next Prime Minister maybe one of my subscribers will be the next Prime Minister and you can take this ser issue seriously you know maybe you didn't even know about it because you weren't taught about it and yeah like I think most most people my parents generation and in my generation we didn't have a lot of education about it. I don't know what is what kind of education around this issue exists now in schools but um, yeah it's uh anyway it's just it's just it's really sad so I think the you know it's a very valid question should should Canadians celebrate Canada Day I think the I think to me it seems like the best the best thing to do is to celebrate you know the good aspects there's so many good things about Canada but also to grieve at the same time to, in certain situations you can celebrate and grieve uh, you know at the same time so it almost it almost seems like like that you know there's groups in Canada calling for like the cancel Canada Day can't cancel Canada Day well you know I think that it seems to me like the best thing is to to uh, to be able to celebrate the good and also to grieve the bad so that you know if we celebrate the good and grieve the bad at least we're kind of we're kind of celebrating the 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 the, the target for what we're kind of aiming for uh, if we don't celebrate but we just grieve the past well it's almost like well what what is Canada that like what, what where are we going you know um, we need to kind of think about the think about the the future there are a lot of different people groups in Canada generally living peacefully maybe justice isn't being applied equally that's something that needs to happen justice needs to happen but we need to be able to kind of celebrate our unity celebrate uh, celebrate Canada's existence so that's kind of my approach I think a lot of Canadians are in the same with me you know like I'm wearing a Canada shirt and my Canada rabbit ears um, so, so celebrating the good things about Canada so many nice things about Canada you know Canada allows pe people from different countries a lot of my subscribers have been from places where they didn't have many rights for example they come to Canada now they have more rights they have more freedom more uh, more prosperity that's a great thing that should be celebrated um, but at the same time really to take this issue seriously and uh, I don't really know how to take it seriously other other than just talking about it on my channel to uh, you know like I said the first step is to kind of like bring people into the awareness of what has happened that children they're finding remains of children in unmarked graves across Canada that's uh that's that's not something that uh, should have happened obviously and why who are these people I, boy imagine that eh? it's kind of touches close to close to home with me because I'm a teacher imagine like imagine punishing someone for 
for sleeping, going to sleep with their sister because they were scared. God, whew. Yeah, anyway, so I just really hope justice comes out. I hope justice will be applied. Well, that's the end of the sentence. I hope justice will be applied <laughs> because justice is justice for everybody, not just justice for one group. Um, hope, hope all the different people groups in Canada can really be reconciled, be, 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 become kind of united, um, united in their in their love for Canada, their their acceptance of one another. Um, and uh, it's it's good if if different people groups mourn each other's each other's I guess the histories and um, especially when that group when one group has has kind of taken um, has been responsible for taking taking the rights of another group like I said it's hard for me to know if if my ancestors my ancestors did come from from Europe they were escaping war it's hard for me to know if anybody in my family ever ever was involved in the decision making of the, I, I don't think so but um but I don't want to just pass the buck either you know what I mean like it's easy for people to say oh that's not my problem it's not my fault but uh yeah I don't know like I all I can do is say hey I, I really really want uh justice to be applied and I want the truth to come out for the well-being of First Nations people that would be that would be great so that's uh my talk here for Canada Day so yeah just remember the First Nations people in your prayers that justice would win justice would come out that uh, that uh, moving forward you know the First Nations people would be respected and be treated really well here in uh, in their own country because wow that's uh, what a tragedy to not even get justice in your own country. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you for thank you for your time. Thank you for listening and uh, for caring about this too. I, I care about this this issue. That's why I wanted to talk about it. Any any kind of justice, any any inj major injustices in your own area need to be talked about. Like I said, there are injustices all around the world that I don't know about, but this is within range of me. Like I said, I I mean I was just drove through Kamloops a few weeks ago coming here to BC that school was there and these graves are there they're there i mean even you know i don't know the history of canada are there unmarked graves did someone take a bunch of kids and bury them here and i don't know like this is i'm within range of that that's why i'm talking about this it's uh it's it's just heartbreaking it's it's really angering it's yeah so and the other thing is that because this is a recent thing I don't know how many of these people would have been alive if, if any if any of these school teachers were alive that would know about you know ah oh man these flies are eating me alive I can't even think but yeah so justice may, maybe some of those teachers are uh, are still alive who, who who committed these atrocities like let's let let's get the truth out what happened what happened let's bring some justice here um so anyway that's my talk guys anyway i just want to say wish you guys a happy canada day uh like i said uh let me know in the comments what your favorite thing is about canada and uh i'm just so thankful to be in a country where <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> sorry i'm getting eaten by flies here wouldn't wouldn't be a good canadian if i didn't apologize right so I'm sorry about these flies. I'm sorry that these flies are eating me. I want to apologize to you that these flies are eating me. And I want to apologize that there are planes flying overhead and ruining my ruining my video. So, um, let me know what your what your favorite thing is about Canada. And uh, just give you a nice shot of this forest here and the sun and the beautiful birds that you can hear. And uh, oh, there's a trail. Parsons Trail. Let's go in here. Yeah, so here's another going closer to the river here. Yeah, look at that. Look at this cool area. Man, it's just so peaceful, right? Like, uh, how many people have you seen here walking around? Saw some some bikers, but uh, other than that, <laughs> it's been pretty quiet. So. 
yeah hopefully if uh, I know a lot of my subscribers are interested in coming to Canada so I really hope you can come here for a visit at least or uh, maybe get your permanent residency here and just uh, become a Canadian citizen or whatever the case is for your journey that you can enjoy enjoy uh, this this kind of piece piece here and um, so guys I wish you all the best and I just want to say I love you and uh, hope when you come to Canada you know you can really enjoy the freedom that we have here but at the same time remember remember this aspect of Canadian history and uh, not sweep it under the rug problems should never be sweeped under the rug because then they come back you know they, they never get dealt with that way so even though maybe nobody no, nobody in the government or anything had any part in this I don't know they, uh, they they should just actually stop in my opinion they should stop everything and say okay we're gonna we're gonna deal with this um, on a massive scale and not just kind of keep hoping the issue goes away it, it won't go away because justice always uh, injustice always 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 guys I literally can't even think that's how that's how these flies are look at that little birdhouse up there isn't that cool yeah man there's just like millions and millions of flies so I'll stop complaining about the flies and uh, I just <laughs> You guys, uh, happy Canada Day. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments and uh, wish you a great day. And if you're in Canada, happy Canada Day. If you're outside Canada, well, happy Canada Day as well. And I uh, hope you're having a great day in your country. Maybe you can celebrate Canada Day here. I was uh, gonna go to a Canada Day parade, but uh, I think all the Canada Day parades are, uh, are canceled due to COVID heard some noise coming from here yeah I think COVID um, has basically canceled all the, the Canada Day Parade so yeah so maybe next year I can take you guys to a Canada Day Parade and uh, yeah but for now I'll just uh, sign off from here in the beautiful BC forest look at this cool tree all the moss growing on that tree it's just uh, just gorgeous spot wish you guys could be with me here walk and talk with me in person just have a chat and enjoy this nature so i'll sign off have a great day guys and i'll see you over in the next episode of mad english tv <laughs> take care